This meeting is being recorded. Okay. Do you want to, for the recording, do you want to go back over the minutes? Or do you not need that? Um, I don't think you necessarily need to. Okay. So then I'll open the floor for discussion on the traffic control officer. Just, just to add to Keith's point about, about it not costing the, the town, we still charge the administrative fee. So there's actually fees that will come to the town. Um, in addition to the, the officer getting paid, we'll still get those um, administrative fees as well. Yep. <clears throat> I feel like this um, this makes it easier for our police chief to take care of things in town that are not strictly speaking needing a police officer like these um, you know the shifts on roads when we need a um, the person like that I, and, and it not having a, an impact on the um, oh what's the right word for it <laughs> the the part of our budget that's paid for out of our uh, taxes then I, I don't have any reason to not support this. I agree. I agree. I think it makes a lot of sense. Yep. Jim, can I ask a, a specific question? Sure. Um, in this paragraph, it talks about um, and was previously employed as a full-time or part-time police officer. It is not required. Um, is there any point in the future when, when you would hire people who were not formally officers? I, I guess what's the what's the point? What's the why is that in there? I guess is what are we trying to get there? Well, I think the the main reason for this is because of um, all the 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 post stuff that's coming down. So we have part time officers or or maybe retired officers that want to continue to do details but they don't want to attend 200 hours of training, additional training, plus do four, 40 hours or more worth of in-service training every year. So they can, they can kind of retire and then just jump into a, a traffic position without, without being required to have to attend you know, dozens and dozens of hours of training. They'll, they'll stay certified with their CPR, which we do in-house anyways. Uh, they'll stay, stay up to date with that. Um, but the rest of the stuff they won't have to they won't have to put the time and effort into that. So I think that's the that's kind of the reason why we're looking at former you know part-time officers or retired officers, just because we know at that point we know they've already got the training as well. So we don't have to train them in uh, traffic enforcement on top of things. We just have to make sure that they they've had it. But why restrict it to only people who um have, were previously employed as a full-time or part-time officer if they have the requisite training in traffic control? Uh, I, I guess it doesn't have to be. I mean, I we were looking at it from a, a part-time police officer or a retired. I understand you're, 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 you've you got a, a particular crowd that you think is going to be perfect for this job, yeah. but do we, do we need to restrict it to that? Could we just end with uh, traffic control or its equivalent. And then the part that's highlighted there on the screen, uh, but is not required to be certified as a post officer. Um, and, and just, and just, just uh, strike the, the part that's highlighted there on the screen. Yeah, I, I don't think that's a, that's a critical issue. I mean, I, I was just looking at from the perspective of um, not, Again, we don't we don't have to hire them, but if, if somebody came from a, a highway department in some other town and said, hey, I want to apply for this position, well, you know, you work for a highway department or a fire department or whatever it may be, we're, we're mm -hmm. trying to kind of keep it geared more towards somebody with law enforcement experience as opposed to just opening it up to, to anybody. that wants Well, I'm, I'm not saying anybody. I'm saying anybody who's got the training. And it was that's the thing that was clear here is that the training is for traffic control, right? Correct. And if that's really the only training you need, why specify that it has to be a former police officer? 
why not somebody who has that training, even if they were in a DPW somewhere or something else? Yeah, no, I again, I it's not a uh, it's not a critical thing. I, I suppose at some point we could we could look at that, or depending on who who applies for a position, if we if we put it out there. So I don't I don't think it needs okay. to. Be, I mean, if that's an issue, sure, yeah. So you would be okay with striking that? Yeah, I don't. I don't. It's not a mandatory thing by law. So yeah, my my concern was just it, are you. I guess my question was, are, are you limiting the applicant pool? I guess unnecessarily or, or you know, upfront, are you limiting the applicant pool? Um, and then I guess a follow-up question was that um, if it was, if they had, if somebody had police officer training outside of Massachusetts with that, I don't know, is it all standardized, I guess? Well, that's that's the, the goal is to have standardized training. That's the whole purpose behind post but right yeah. now it's, it's not all standardized. I mean, traffic control is traffic control, um, but it's what our our MPTC or Municipal Police Training Committee, they they would be the ones to make a determination to say if, if this type of training is equivalent to the MPTC training or not. Um, we can verify that and then, then move forward. Okay. Cool. Is there any other discussion? I make a motion. We put it to a vote. Okay. okay. Do we um, want to just go ahead, Joyce? I was going to say, I, I, I would move to approve the position with uh, striking the uh, part that, uh, that Jim just said was unnecessary, uh, which is highlighted on the screen, striking the and was previously employed as a full-time or part-time Massachusetts police officer or as a Massachusetts deputy sheriff. I second that. <clears throat> okay, I have a motion made and seconded. Is there any other discussion? If not, I'll put it for a roll call vote. Betty? Betty? Well, we can't hear you. All right. Thumbs up, thumbs down. <laughs> Can you tell us? There you <laughs> I can't see. All right. I, yeah. I see a thumbs up. Thumbs up, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Joyce. Hi. Tom. Hi. Susan. Hi. And myself, I. Okay, it passed with the amendment. Next item on the agenda was to discuss the rec department and I had received notice this afternoon that Chris was not going to probably make it till around 730. Um, is there, do we have anything else we, we can discuss in the meantime, or how do we want to handle him not being here at the moment. Right, could I just go back for a second and ask a question to Brian. Keith. Sure. Regarding the, the uh, traffic control position, is this now? Now that this is voted by the personnel committee, that this has to go on to the select board now for a vote. Yep. Yeah, the select board could vote on it as early as uh, their next meeting, which is the thirteenth. Okay. Just wanted to make sure procedurally what what the next step was. Thank you. So you can schedule somebody for the fourteenth, assuming it passes. <laughs> Be conditional. It's it's the uh, it's the month of June that's going to be the challenging part. <laughs> <laughs> You're well, welcome. And grades and it's it's going to be fun. <laughs> well, we can talk about the rec people while they're not here. Yes, we can we can open the discussion. That's for sure. I know I can see there's at least one person that might be also interested in hearing what's the topics are for this position. So, all right, I'll open the floor. We've all seen the job description. Oh, I cannot find the job description. You Is did that? not. You want to sh share that, Brian? Sure. I just got to change it on the screen. Hold on one sec.
Can people see that? Yes. Okay. I saw down below that the position is for five hours a week. Uh, I guess I have two questions about it, and I don't know if we can do this without him on the call. Uh, one is, does five hours a week make sense? Because there's sometimes during the year that nothing is going on, and other times that there may be craziness. Is there a way to work around this rather than specifying five hours a week? Regardless, or do we do we make it a, a five hours a week would be um, roughly two hundred and fifty hours a year? Do we make it a yearly hourly <laughs> thing? I don't know. I think you got to set a monetary limit. Yeah, I want to. I want to cap it, but I'm just thinking the workload is not not even across the whole year mm -hmm. well i think their argument is going to be that in the spring summer and fall it's very busy with programs at hurley etc and in the winter time there's programs at the elementary school uh basketball mm -hmm. stuff like that so yeah there is kind of something going on almost all seasons okay and then there's other things like budgeting um and uh it went it went past a little too fast for me and i still can't find the emailed copy <laughs> but, i just sent i just resent it joyce it should be there in a sec thank yep. you um okay yeah if what i'm saying is not an issue then great I just wanted to raise the question because I wasn't sure how that worked. And one of the comments that I have or concern, I guess it's a concern I have is in regards to, as we know, the rec department has always been volunteer in the past. And I wanna move forward cautiously. I, I think it's a good idea to try to get continuity in the in this type of position but at the same point in time there is a lot of other things that are also done by other people on the commission i mean on the, the rec department that are volunteering their time and if we're going to move forward and compensate one person and not anybody else i'm not sure how that's going to affect the the membership of the committee whether that will alter their their feelings towards wanting to be on it or not i i guess it's something we'd have to wait and see but um there's so many people that that are through the years have been on the committee that volunteer things not only their time but equipment and using their fuel and things of that nature and they're not being compensated and so i'm just feeling a little cautious here that we could be creating further problems. You know, I've been thinking about that. Um, and I, I feel like the thing that might need to be paid is the person who's coordinating everything. Um, so for example, under the position summary and uh, essential duties, um, it's, you know, it's about recruiting volunteers, getting information out, doing the communication, making sure the communications happen, you know, ordering things, making a budget, those kind of things. I would fully expect that this person is also going to be the coach of a team, um, especially if their kid is in one of the, the I, I think when people volunteer to coach, when people volunteer to be on the committee to oversee this person, I'm giving them a resource so that they don't have to volunteer to do all the stuff that's in here that they can their volunteering can be about helping make decisions about what we should do but not have to do all the work of implementing them um, helping to coach right 
but not having to go recruit all the other coaches so that there's enough coaches for the teams. I sort of feel like it may be administrative work that could be done by someone who's not associated with the rec commission, but I think that it would be an asset for someone who's basically doing these things, which are really, it's administrative and recruiting, right? And supervising. Um, I, I think that can be differentiated from volunteering to coach, you know, volunteering to uh, bring your equipment to the practice, you know, uh, volunteering to come help clean the fields on the beginning of the year when they do that every April. I, you know, I understand that, that this, this one person's not gonna be able to really run the whole department, um, that they're really gonna still rely a lot on volunteers, but there has to be like a person who, you know, the kind of the buck stops here when it comes to figuring out the budget, um, you know, figuring out who's gonna coach. Uh, and maybe this is sort of taking a little bit of the weight of that sort of burden off of the rec commission to have a person that they can say, hey, that's your job. And they don't all have to volunteer to do that in addition to the coaching and all of the other things you mentioned that people do. I think it's really, really important that the position be defined really well so that somebody doesn't count time that they're coaching their kids as, as time that they're, they deserve to be paid for. Nobody yeah. should be paid for that. Does that make sense? Am I making a, a distinction that's not important? Or? I think Amy Schrader has Amy, something to say. Go ahead, Amy. So Joyce, that was kind of what I was thinking too. Um, when I was administrative assistant, I did a lot of um, administrative work for the rec commission and, um, you know, invoices, um, rosters, I would be part of registration night. Um, so I feel like a recreation coordinator might be a little bit too much for, I, I feel like that's kind of a, um, a strong title for what we actually might need. Um, I do agree completely that I think this position shouldn't be, whoever takes this position shouldn't be a member on the rec commission. Um, I almost feel like this, this position would take direction from the rec commission that says, hey, can you process these invoices for me? Can you, can you bill um, for banners at Hurley Heat? Can you, so the administrative support is still there. Um, I, I do, you know, um, my husband is one of the rec committee members and we have, you, you know, if we're, you know, some of the rec is responsible for field maintenance and we have taken our personal equipment down there to get the fields ready. Or, um, you know, my son has, who's four years old, has cleaned up the Waitley Elementary School ball field. And, you know, with yeah, our equipment- My kids usage, did that too. <laughs> yeah, like I, I don't ever want it to come to, us billing the town, like then we're losing the values of a small town, I feel like. Like this is all part of it because you want your kids to, to you know, have this opportunity to be part of a, a, a good sports league. Um, so I feel like when we when we start to get into like a rec coordinator, I, I just don't know if how I, I, I would support this position if, if this mem this person wasn't a part of the rec committee. Um, I feel like the rec committee should all remain volunteers and then this position would just be here to, to give additional administrative support, whether that's managing the, the software, the app that they have for registrations or, or whatever else is needed. But I, I feel like there should be, um, it should be two set, you know, there'll be the rec commission and then this administrative. Yeah. Is this current, Amy, is this currently being done by people in the rec commission? Is it currently being, you mentioned the administrative assistant. Is the administrative assistant currently doing these responsibilities? No. Um, so when Jonathan Edwards was chair, um, when I was providing the administrative support, since he stepped down as chair, the responsibilities did get shifted back to the Recreation Commission, which now I can see as to why Chris might feel overwhelmed by some of it, because number one, he's learning a new, you know, he, he hasn't had any experience with municipal government, and um, it, it can be a lot at times. Um, 
So I, I agree with a position like this and five hours a week probably might make sense um, during certain times of the year. Um, I would be interested to see what the pay is, um, but I, I, so right now it is, it has been all shifted back to the rec commission. Okay, thank you. So Amy, do you think it would, how would it work or do you think it would work well if there was just some, if this administrative support was just supplied by somebody who works for the town already, who already knows how to do, you know, billing and so on, but also would have these kind of added responsibilities of, um, you know, doing a little bit more coordinating the programs and managing the facilities and doing the communication, um, you know, yeah. order and um, maintain the equipment and supplies. It's, it's, it seems like a little bit more than somebody at Fort Sandy Lane would normally do as an administrative duty. Um, yeah. But it, but it, 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 it does really seem like, you know, somebody with your skills, you already know how to do a lot of these things. That, that would be, um, that would be something where, I mean, I guess I'm trying to figure out, is this really just administrative assistance or is there more to it on account of recruiting volunteers and yeah, establishing yeah. rules and regulations, managing you know, schedules and updates and communication? Well, yeah, I, I guess the person to ask would be Chris, like, I don't know how much goes into the software system and, and I don't know, you know, I, I know for years, Wayne has gone down and counted helmets and counted baseballs and seen what was down there as a rec committee member. Um, I mean, my husband did the same with T-ball. You kind of figure out what you need and, and you, you put in a request. Like I, and so I don't, I mean, without talking to Chris, I mean, maybe it's, it's way more than what I think it is because there we have the new software and I don't know how involved that is. Um, so there's that part. And then there's also the field, you know, I kind of feel like there's a field maintenance part too, where that mm -hmm. comes into play and, and who's responsible for what and how, you know, how involved does field maintenance get? I, I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, I'd be interested to hear what, how, how Chris, how intensive the, the software system is or how, you know, maybe he has these other plans for the future that he would like this person to, to take over. I'm not, I don't know. Do we have any sense if the intent was to maybe have someone from the, the rec department take this position or was it always the intent that it would be potentially someone outside of it? I got the impression it was somebody, you know, they were looking for somebody in the rec department that had some experience with this, but I may be wrong. They may have to step down if that's the idea, but I don't I, like this person isn't necessarily responsible for um, maintenance of the fields. They oversee financial operations. They order and maintain equipment and supplies. Um, they recruit volunteers and to, with a very vague to support programs, which I would assume might mean helping groom the, the fields. They manage the facility schedules, updates and issues, but that's different than managing the facility. And, um, yeah. and then uh, they're you know, purchasing, administer the budget, host the rec commission meeting, and then perform other tasks as assigned by the rec commission. I mean, I, I, I think a lot of the work that the volunteers do, they're still gonna continue to do. But this is, it, it's, it seems to me, it's just, maybe I'm wrong, but it seems like this is taking a burden off of the rec commission to have a person to whom they can hand all of this work. And it probably would be good if it's a former rec commission member because then they would know kind of what yeah. it is that needs to get done. That they would be well qualified. 
if they were a former commission member. But I also appreciate what Amy said about it should not be a person who's a voting rec commission member either. You can't really be your own employer in that particular sense. Sorry, you can't be overseen by um, by yourself. Agreed. Right? And I think here it said something like it was, um, oh, where was oversight again? They, that they don't exercise supervision, but they work under the direction of the rec commission with the ultimate supervisory authority. I feel really powerful now, remaining <laughs> with the select board. Uh, but you said they kind of set their own daily work so long as they're keeping the rec commission happy. So I, I think it's a good point. I don't know if it needs to be in here that the person can't be a current serving member of the rec commission. That might be a good thing to add. Yeah, I, I sort of agree with you there, Joyce, that especially where it, you know, when it says that, you know, they work under the discretion of the commission. So you can't be your own boss in that aspect. They could be a, a non-voting member, perhaps. I don't know if that's an important distinction to make. Keith, can I ask a, a question? Sure. And, and you know, maybe Amy or, or or Joyce know more about this than I do, but what are we talking about in terms of, I don't know how we want to measure the amount of services we provide. I mean, how many players, how many leagues, are we talking about a couple teams each sports season? Are we talking a bunch of team? you know, are we running our own leagues or are we part of a larger league where I'll just say for my kids, we're part of a roots, you know, roots league, right. And roots does all this, all the coordination and we just register our players and, and, you know, the league does it. When I was younger, it was Pioneer Valley junior soccer league, right. Uh, how much, uh, how much, like how many, how many kids are we talking about? How many teams are we talking about? If anybody knows. You got any idea, Amy, or? No, I mean, for instance, like Luke played basketball and he had 18 kids on his, on the basketball roster. Um, I, do, I couldn't tell you about other grades. Um, I, I'm sorry, I couldn't, I don't know. It sounds like they had two teams worth of people, but maybe only one uh, enough coaches for one team. Um, <laughs> my kids were a while That's back. About right. My I mean, my kids were quite a while back, but they consistently had enough kids for two teams for almost anything. Um, yeah. Especially in the lower grades, where a soccer team only had five people on it. Um, right. Baseball was different because there's more people on a team. Um, we usually only had one team there, um, and Soccer, as you got older, had more people on the team. But there were consistently for the younger grades, um, at least two teams uh, from Waitley. And we were playing with other rec commissions that also didn't have, like, well, I don't think we have a roots. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> as, no, as that wasn't saying, around. It's, it's like all the other rec commissions, they get together, decide on a, a, on a schedule that works. and. Um, so I guess it, it might also be interesting to know if other towns have already started doing this, Chris would probably know. Um, because, I, you know, it sort of makes, I mean, the, the thing that I like about it is it is I, I like the idea that this can take the burden off of people who are volunteering so that they're doing the part they like, which is coaching their kids and cheering them on at the side of the game and giving them rides to where they need to go. Um, and they're not having to figure out, oh, how do I submit an invoice to the town for the edit? You know, and they're not having that, just give that to one person and let them do it. Give, uh, give these various tasks up. You know, somebody should, and maybe this person is the one who would go down and say, oh, it's T-ball time. Let's see what equipment's left over from last year and what do I need to order? You know, and that wouldn't have to be uh, uh, you know, somebody who, you know, this is putting their kids to bed because they had to go down and count the bats, you know? Um, I think those kind of things would be nice to be able to take that burden off. But it, I think it has to be kind of clearly 
and and I think maybe it is clearly uh, counted out here. What kinds of things are their responsibilities, and what kinds of things they uh, are, don't count as these responsibilities? And if they you know if they have kids on the teams, they're going to have to <coughs> you know do do the volunteer work like everybody else does. Does that make sense? Yes, I agree. Yeah, I I certainly. This position will create continuity and and hopefully eliminate the the turnover aspect because you know we have had other people who come and go and they may only be a short term and then they if they're the chairman and they're taking on all these responsibilities and then they leave abruptly or something of that nature it's it puts a lot more you know it's, there's always a learning curve that we're trying to teach the new person. Mm -hmm. So I guess the next question is if do we, I see two things. Number one is do we change the wording at all to make it so that they cannot be on the rec department? And then number two is how do we handle the amount of hours that we discussed earlier? Instead of maybe five hours per week, we try to cap it at a, at a yearly number of some sort. No, we need the lawyer for that. I mean, <laughs> we can't break labor laws and make them work 50 hours one week and, you know. No. But so, Given the nature of the work, and this is, I keep in mind, my kids went through a different rec system than here, so I really don't know how what's involved. Um, would it make sense to do it on a monthly basis, you know, 25 hours a month? rather, which then can be distributed. Is there something every month, even if there isn't something every week? I feel like there is, but I think we need to ask Chris or ask somebody. Yeah, I, I, I agree with Tom. I feel like maybe Chris has some ideas as to activities he wants to do in the summertime or how to spruce different lakes up, or he he could have some you know underlying ideas that we don't know about. Just from from my experience, I think the bulk of the work is in the spring, the summer, and the fall. And I don't I don't know how it gets managed <clears throat> now with all these leagues at Hurley Park. You got frontier trying to play there you got over 40 over 30 over 40 uh plus little league kids and <clears throat> who's coordinating all that now is that what i get the impression that's what this position is going to do manage a lot of that stuff but wouldn't it be yeah, nice if chris were here to ask <laughs> Yeah. Isn't that what the new software was going to do? Do you know that, Amy? Is the new software working towards scheduling? I'm sorry, I don't know. I believe okay. I believe it. I believe so. Okay. Yeah. Who's who's paying for the new software? Uh, we incorpor incorpor incorporated it into the user fees. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know what we want to do because, I mean, Chris originally had asked to have the meeting move till seven, and then he said he would be on at seven thirty. So um, he's he's coaching uh, varsity baseball at Frontier. Yeah, maybe we go on to number three. Yeah, and see if he joins before we're done. What's number three? Go ahead. Discuss the idea of premium pay for frontline workers during the pandemic as eligible expenses under the American Rescue Plan Act. Okay, we'll open the floor for this. Uh, I know we've discussed it or it's been on our agenda in the past. Um, I, I guess I would start by asking Brian, is there anything new towards this that we can discuss? Uh, um, now that the rules have changed, essentially we can the, the town can accept the its full award as as lost revenue. So um, any other restrictions that may be under the 
under the premium pay um, provisions of the law are really not applicable. So, so the town can spend the money as it as it sees fit. Has the committee discussed this at all, Brian, or or that's maybe next it, meeting? It's on. It's on their list. It's on. It's on that list of things to talk about. Um, yeah. So probably next meeting. Um, yeah, I don't know how to respond to it at the moment. I mean, it's. We just, I just don't feel we have, our committee has enough information to know no. what we should be even recommending. Yeah, I, I, I sort of feel like we have, you know, we, I don't feel like I have the information to decide which municipal jobs would qualify as frontline workers. I mean, I can think of some that are clearly frontline workers, uh, the transfer station, and yep. um, they're there. You know, it's granite outdoors, but you know, had to keep that waste facility open, right? And they were on that front line. Now, I then the whole spectrum goes back to people who could work from home. I don't think of that as front line, but I also don't know that I know everything. I mean, I don't. I don't. I like to think I'm humble enough to listen to what other people think about what is really a frontline worker. So I, I, I agree with uh, those who said that I'm not really sure we've got the information. It might be that maybe, maybe people need to make a case and give us something more to think about. All right, then um, do we wanna make a motion to table it again then? And what's the thoughts of the committee? I think you gotta table it. Yeah, we don't have any new information to discuss it on, but I think once, no. once we do, then we should revisit it. How do we get the information that might help us decide about this? Because it's just going to get tabled and tabled and tabled if we don't actually actively seek out whatever information we would need. And Is this something we can find out what other communities are doing? Maybe somebody has a good idea that we can leverage? Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm certainly agreeable to that. I, I just feel like we shouldn't be the only community that doesn't do something to frontline right. workers, but at the same point in time, if we're the only one, then, you know, I, I, I don't know. So I, I'd like to know a little bit more what some other communities have done also. Well, Brian, what do you think is a good way for us to get that information? Um, I mean, I can, I can ask the question on some listservs to see what to see what other folks have done. Um, that's probably the best. I think the best way to start. Yeah, I think it's worth trying. See what we get. So what? So so let's talk about specific questions. So obviously, so obviously, yes or no? Have you done it, and why? I might not be able to get that, but. Um, I'll get the yes, no part. And then obviously if it's yes, um, sort of what are their, I mean, essentially they had to have some, I would hope some some criteria that they use yeah. to determine, you know, yeah. whether it was face-to-face -face contact, whether it was, presumably it's face-to-face -face contact would be one of them, but I can't think of any other ones. Yeah. Um, How did they determine who it went to? And how much did they do? Right, and that that amount could could vary depending on the position. Um, mm -hmm. 
I'll take a, for instance, police officer, the difference between a full-time police officer versus a part-time police officer that may have only worked once a, once a month versus someone who's working 40 hours a week. So there's different, yeah. there's different, like, you know, amount of contact time that the, our employees had. Any idea what the, if the schools are going to do anything, Brian? I, I haven't heard. Um, I, I presume it would be part of their current negotiations, but I, I don't know. I thought the state was talking about adding three years to, if you were a teacher, they were going to add three, and you worked, they were going to add three years towards your retirement. I don't know if that ever happened or got thrown by the wayside. I don't know. I don't, as far as I know that there, there was that legislative proposal, but I don't think it went anywhere. Okay. I, it means it's probably still out there, but I don't think it's, it's, it's passed. It's not, not going to fly. Probably. And, and I, and I don't know the current, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't uh, heard of the current, the status of the current negotiations as to what, what's actually in the, in the contracts. I'm not sure so, I'm allowed to talk about it yet. Probably not. <laughs> Did they have get COVID money like the town did? To, like did Frontier Regional get a, a substantial amount of money or that they can disperse the way they want? Um, in, in, I think that not in the same sense as, as to how the towns received it. The, the first sort of monies that came out under um, the CARES Act there was different grant programs that came out that schools could apply for, but they weren't direct recipients. We did, Frontier did go to each of the towns and ask for, um, you know, a certain percentage of, of funds to help with um, some modifications to the schools. Frontier did. And obviously mm -hmm. we spent some of the monies on Waitley as well. Yeah. yeah. But I don't remember any of that being frontline pay. When those, because those came up, you know, uh, over the course of the last two years, all, all the uh, at least all the CARES Act that the that the select board had approved was either cleaning and disinfecting equipment or supplies, um, you know, yeah. ventilation and things like that, and PPE. Yeah. So then, if if we were to consider a town employee such as a transfer station, we need to also consider the teachers is that what you're saying it's the same pool of money uh, i don't know about that but i think the personnel committee doesn't have anything to do with the teachers we don't get to say they negotiate their own okay we are yeah. talking about i think people who are not in the school but are municipal employees i don't think right. it's our um they okay. they have attorneys to negotiate for them i agree uh, okay so we're just talking about transfer station, police officers, firefighters, yeah, the highway department, but not really. I don't feel, but no. Be, and you know, m my argument is that the highway department got two weeks paid vacation, so <laughs> you know, two weeks they got paid and they stayed home. So yeah, you know, and there is some some staff at the town office that still had yes. to. Yeah, be face-to-face yeah. -face contact mm -hmm. with employees marriage licenses in. death certificates yep. that all that yep. kind of that business had to go on right so i agree i that's i'm that, I, I i sort of feel like that i agree with you tommy that's right about where the line ought to be but i can't say that i know enough about what everybody's job was and how they had to do it during the pandemic right so that uh, so that I could even do a reasonable first draft of how that should go. I feel like we need some yeah, input. Yeah. And if we get some from other towns, it may also guidance. be that we could get some, maybe some guidance, even from our own employees, um, you know, knowing that you know, they, they may say something that's in their self-interest, but you know, that's, uh, they, they're also the font of information for how things went here during the pandemic. So, mm -hmm. uh, you yeah. know. Okay. Do we want to have a motion to table this until we can get more information? I make yeah. a motion we table it. Second. Okay. I have a motion made and seconded. Is there any other discussion? 
Okay, I'll put it to a Keith, roll call vote. Keith, if I could just ask him, just one Go thing. Ahead. Um, I don't know who's on the, the committee, um, but I remember sitting in meetings, I, I think the select board may have mentioned it, I don't know if the finance committee mentioned, but this other committee kind of trying to give the same guidance. So do we know if that committee is working on the same the same type of thing? Because that, that committee was put into place to evaluate it and see where to spend the money. Do they decide on whose essential employees are? Do we know if they're if they're working on that or not? So we're not, you guys aren't trying to- I thought that was deal? a capital committee, that they were really only looking at capital projects. Am no. I wrong about that, Brian? Um, no, it was just this first round of capital projects that they looked at. Um, but really they were looking at all mm -hmm. types of eligible projects. Oh, they just- Projects- pro for, Yeah. Projects or programs, really, right? Because it doesn't just need to be capital projects. So there may be more than, one, more than one committee may be offering advice on this, sounds like. Okay, but I sort of feel that we should make sure that they receive the same information that we're going to obtain. That would be helpful in the pot, you know, to them. I bet it would, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, the way I think that, that, we discussed it with the committee is, I mean, I mean, I think this, this decision is more up the personnel committee's alley in terms of what the committee's responsibilities are in terms of recommending personnel stuff. The, this, the coronavirus committee is more of like, you know, is this something that we think the money should be spent on? Maybe not necessarily down into the details of how it is, but, you know, the decision as to whether that's, Mm. Uh, what they would recommend as the use of funds, maybe not necessarily exactly how it's done, if that makes any sense. Okay. Well, if, again, if we get some new information, then we can attempt to make a recommendation to that committee. So that I sounds reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We then we still have a motion made and seconded on the floor. Is there any other discussion? If not, I'll put it to a roll call vote. Susan? Yes. Joyce? Aye. Betty? Aye. Tom? Aye. And myself? Aye. So that is passed. Um, okay, we'll revert back to the rec committee and it would be my recommendation, unless he's in the waiting room, I don't see Chris, we might as well. I would have liked to have taken care of this, but yeah. We can't without getting some more information. Agreed. Yeah. Just can we put up for the finance committee aspect of it? Can we? We need to plug a number into the budget, yeah. and we're you know if we keep moving this up off or you know I mean I don't know when we're going to make a decision on this. I suppose that. It, if it's five or ten thousand dollars, then it's not going to break the bank. But we were looking for a number to plug in there, and now we don't have a number. What do you think of that, Brian? I I don't even know what to plug in. To be honest with you, no, I don't even know what the appropriate yeah. wage rate is. I I think if it's twenty five to thirty five, I think that's too high. If it's um, if it's twenty or twenty five dollars an hour. Uh, five hours a week, you know, we can do the math. It's right. five to $7,000 roughly yeah. or whatever it is. Well, if the work is essentially administrative, then maybe we look to what we pay administrative assistance. I was and thinking let, the let same thing. Yep. So, yeah. Yes. Although not that many administrative assistants have to go down and count how many baseball bats there are in the, <laughs> in the storage bin. Well, I mean, I, I think that gives us, if we take what our administrate, you know, the staff that we have now, the hourly rate, and if you want to get an idea, Tom, for the finance committee, what it might be, that, and that's the best yeah. we can come up with right now. Do we know what that hourly rate is for our, administ for our admin? I'm guessing it's within a dollar or two of $20 an hour. $20.94. So oh. Okay, so let's say 21 for a budget Thanks, figure. <laughs> oh, God. 
Yeah, so figure 21 bucks an hour or whatever. You're just mm -hmm. and we'll and we're we'll, talking 250 hours a year roughly. Yeah, we'll plug a number in there. Okay. Tentatively. And then we'll try to iron out the details. All right. So do we want to do a motion to table this then? Yeah, I make a motion, we table it. I'll second, second. that. Okay, I have a motion made and seconded. Any other questions or comments? All right, I'll put it to a roll call vote. Susan? Aye. Betty? Aye. Joyce? Aye. Tom? Aye. And myself? Aye. And I believe that concludes our agenda for the night. Is there anything else that you have, Brian? Well, if, I, I mean, At some point, you guys are going to have to meet again. Um, yeah, I mean, we'll need a next meeting date, right? Do we want to try to set that now, or do we want to wait until we know we have the Christmas. information that we are looking for from, like, the yeah. other communities, what they're doing? So you, so you really have two issues left right you have the the recreation position and we have the and if finance is going to want a final vote on sometime shortly after the 12th whatever that's going to be um mm. you're either going to carry a number without right you know with excess money that you maybe won't spend um or i, I don't really know what the mm. finance committee is going to want to do i know the budget's higher than usual this year so right. yeah. is there any re reason to think that this time next week we might have the information or roughly this time because i know this time next week i'll be in a board of selectmen meeting but <clears throat> say next thursday next or well, tuesday i guess that might be a finance committee i mean is there any reason to think we would have enough information within a one week time frame to, I, I can answer the question for um, the ARPA stuff. And I, I think, right, the information is either going to be there or not. So, yeah, we, we could gather that. In terms of the recreation stuff, I, I'm if sorry. We I really just idea. need this guy to be there to answer and address the questions. <coughs> so that's, um, so we could aim for sometime during that week, uh, April 11, 12, um, 14, I'm saying not 13, because there's already a select board meeting and at least two of us that have to be there. Um, well, we could certainly do a doodle poll for that week. I mean, the and, 11th is gonna be tight unless we post it tomorrow, oh. right? Right, okay. Which, then, which we could, um, but it's we would just need to know soon. <laughs> I can't do yeah. the eleventh. I can't do the twelfth. Twelfth. I have an issue on the fourteenth. Yeah, so it would have to be seven thirty or later. Well, I could, I, that, I could do the eleventh, but it would have to be early. Right. Is it is it okay to do it late on the fourteenth? Um, cause that might mean we have a better chance of getting, getting Chris. Uh, also, and it wouldn't necessarily have to be a particularly long meeting. Also, Chris has ball games, so we need to know his schedule. Yeah. Right. But yeah. you know, it's getting it, like right now it's about eight. It's dark out. I don't think they're playing ball right now. No travel. He, so, he may be on so his way back from an away game or something. Right. Right. So Somewhere I had a schedule, but I don't know where it is right here. Right. Well, we could take care of the the one item maybe within the week. It sounds like we don't have enough information to know if Chris can be, but we could offer the 14th and see. Because it seems like among us, the 14th is the only one that's going to work for the, um, the our various schedules, right? Because I know I've got something else on the 11th as well. Um, hmm. And Susan, you said you could do after seven thirty or at seven thirty. Um, 
I could make 7.30 work. I teach until 7. I could make 7.30 work. I'm, I'm looking at the baseball schedule, and I do not see a game on the 14th. There's one on Wednesday, the 13th, and one on Friday, the 15th, but nothing on the 14th. Oh, good. Okay. So you might have a better shot at getting them. Okay. I mean, you can, we can check with them. That's the that's and check with them in the meantime. Yep. Okay. I go about it. Oh, he just came, popped into the waiting he room. He just popped no. in. No. Yep. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> There he is. Hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. Can you hear us, Chris? Yeah, we can't really hear, hear you. you. Oh, boy. That'll be the next dilemma. Yeah. <laughs> we can't hear you, Chris. Can you speak some more or do something? Make sure you're not muted. He's not muted. Yeah, I don't think he is. But we still can't hear him. He can, he could call in and maybe mute his. Yeah. Oh, no. Hey, yeah, we can hear you. There we go. Well, well done. Nice. All right. So Chris, just to update you where we're at, you know, we've discussed it, the, the position, the request from the rec department and I think it's fair to say we all have a lot more questions. Um, I don't know if anybody wants to particularly start asking him the questions. So I'll open it back up to the floor. Okay, um, I'll start with one. Um, I would, uh, do you think I don't know. I'll, I'll say it as if it's you, but it's really probably more than just you. Um, would you object to um, having as part of the position uh, the requirement that you're not a voting member of the Rec Commission while you have this job? Um, and I know it's not really you, <laughs> but whoever has this job cannot be uh, an active like voting member of the Rec Commission since the Rec Commission is doing the um, is providing the administrative direction for this person. Is that something that seems reasonable? Yeah, I, I, I could definitely agree with that. Absolutely. Um, you know, the Rec Recreation Commission, we have a good board of people who all have Whaley's best interests, um, you know, in mind. So I think absolutely, um, you know, to make sure that that whoever is in this position is going to remain consistent with what we're trying to do in Waitley. Um, yeah, I, I totally understand that. That makes sense. Okay. Uh, that was one question. Another question we had, Chris, was in regards to, we were speculating as to presently it was written as five hours per week, but then we were questioning, is there times where throughout the year where there's busier times where five hours a week is not enough? And then is there times where you're struggling to find to do something to do for five hours a week? Yeah, so, um, you know, I would definitely say, yeah, I mean, that the responsibilities um, throughout a lot of the year, yeah, it is it is more than five hours a week. I, I can't think of a week where I've put in less than five. But at the same time, I think that's a good, I think that's a good baseline. I think that, you know, jump any higher than that. I don't think that would, that would be appropriate. Um, also like during the summertime that, you know, that can be a relatively slow time, I suppose. But if, like, we'll say during the summer would be the slowest time, but at the same time, like we have over 50 playing, we have over 30 playing, we're gonna have a COFAX team playing. Um, we're going to have, these are all being played at Hurley. Um, 
we're going to have our summer league teams. Those are going to be playing at Hurley. And Waitley, the town of Waitley has actually taken on the role of um, organizing summer league baseball for the frontier youth programs. We're going to use our platform um, to collect registrations and uh, recruit coaches and all that kind of good stuff. So even though the summer in theory could be a slower time, we're adding an additional program to, uh, you know, make sure that these kids are getting access to, you know, competitive baseball in the summertime. And then also just constantly doing scheduling, um, you know, working with Wayne, working with Keith, to make sure the field's up to date. Um, also, do, like game planning orders, um, you know, in facility updates, things like that. Um, that's something that's going on throughout the summer as well. And then, yeah, once we get ripping into like fall season with soccer and basketball, yeah, it's it's always you're you're always working five plus for sure. Mm. One thought that we had thrown out was instead of doing it as five hours a week, which feels relatively rigid, doing something like 20 or 25 hours a month. So that allows a little bit more flexibility for when things are and aren't busy. Does that make sense, though, in your world? I guess. Um, I mean, I can certainly understand where that would be coming from you know, going like in theory, the five hours, right? If we go four weeks, that'd be 20 hours. Um, but I guess me personally, like I would want to limit it to that. Like I, I wouldn't want to necessarily pay for that five hours, you know? Um, and I think as long as that person is being held accountable for that five hours a week, that that's, that's that sustainable amount of time that you're putting to it. Um, in order to be successful. So I certainly understand where we'd be coming from with the 20 to 25 hours, but I suppose my preference would be to have something that is rigid and having a specific number like, okay, we are putting in every week, you're putting in five hours minimum type thing. Because if you're not putting in five hours in one week, you're falling behind um, in one way or the other. So I... <laughs> Going above 20 hours isn't necessarily something we need to consider, while at the same time, whoever is in charge of the rec department, they need to have that, you know, that line that like, hey, you, you need to be putting in five hours minimum at this, at this position. Okay, thank you. Hey, Keith, can I ask a question? Sure. Go ahead, Brian. Um, Chris, you talk about, you know, the number of hours that, that's currently being spent. If the positions were split, with the rec commission and then whoever the, the paid, um, you know, if we had a paid position, how would those hours break out between what we still expect the rec commission to do as opposed to the paid position? So let's say, let's say, let's say the rec chair right now is spending 10 hours a week, right? How would that break out? How do you see that breaking out once, once the position is created? Um, the rec commission presumably will still have some responsibilities to do things, right? How do you see that breaking out? Yeah, um, you know, kind of, kind of how we're operating right now. Um, you know, the person who's in charge of the rec commission, the chair. Um, you know, currently I'm the one who, who's putting in those consistent hours. Um, the rec commission is like it's the resource that we're using to make sure that we're making the right decisions. Um, you know, I, I think about like, um, for a scoreboard, like the other day we ordered up a scoreboard. Sorry, I just want to check my battery. Okay? I'm going to go grab my charger just so I don't lose us right now. So can I come right back? Yep. <laughs> oh God. I always got to find it. Chris, did you win tonight? Did we won ten to one? 
Just get down. Uh, now we're doing a garden hot. Excellent. Thank you, thank you. So, um, so yeah, just getting back to that question, um, just how the rec commission would continue to be utilized. Um, you know, constant communication. Right now we have text groups going, we have email chains going, um, people just constantly filling in on different things. I mean, um, like dedicating the, the scoreboard to Keys, um, to Steve Keys, and uh, there's another gentleman as well on there whose name I wish I knew off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, like, okay, during our meeting, we're all gonna communicate who's, like, who's gonna reach out to Din Brothers in, in Holyoke to begin that process. It's like, okay, the rec chairman has responsibilities. Um, you know, we're doing equipment orders this week. We're doing scheduling. We're getting in touch with coaches, all that good stuff. Like, hey, it's so-and-so in the rec commission. Would you have time to reach out to Din Brothers in order to begin the process? Or um, like, hey, we're, we're, uh, we're putting in the scoreboard that people have time to get together so that we can make sure that we're putting, in it, putting, in, putting it in the right place. That's, that's something we're working on. We can't get it in left field because then the sun will block it kind of thing. So like, hey, let's all get together. Let's figure out where this is gonna go. Um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, go ahead. Yeah. Well, um, could I ask a, a something there? Because um, to us, it's not necessarily as clear as it may be to you. Okay. Um, I understand that the rec commission is a lot of dedicated volunteers and that there's a lot of work to do. And um, when I look at the description of this job, it's um, well, except for promote the health, physical and safe activities for all families, which is sort of a throwaway thing. That's what everybody on the rec commission is doing. Um, everything, the things, the jobs tend to be things that I, I think of as being fairly administrative, you know, like managing the facility schedule, you know, with updates and coordinating the youth sports programs and establishing rules for the facilities and recruiting volunteers and distributing information and communicating with the staff and the families. And these are all, these are fairly administrative things that would be paid for. Um, and we were a little worried that there might be just some sort of, I don't know if blurring is the right word, but there's a lot of volunteer work that we can't pay for. And you don't have the fees <laughs> to pay for that either. And we, we just wanted to ask a little about like, how do you, kind of distinguish the responsibilities for this job from the normal uh, volunteering that you might expect from a, a member of the rec commission or even the chair. My understanding, yeah, so all of these burdens have fallen and, and on, on, uh, on a committee that is really trying to work hard and they having someone do these administrative things would be taking a burden off the committee, okay? But I guess I'm a little worried about kind of the, the how does how that distinguish from like normal volunteering? Yeah, so I mean, I think I think you said it right with the with the administrative um, aspect of it. You know, I think when you when you have a rec commission, you know, we're all we're all working together to put out the best product we can for for youth sports around around here. But at the same time, like, does someone in the rec commission who's working? you know, 40 hours a week as kids, like, you know, are they going to have the time to take on these administrative roles? Like who's, who's reaching out to with sporting goods in Springfield to be like, okay, I need, um, like today, I need 14, I need 14 minors hats. I need 14 rookies hats. I need 25 T-ball hats. Our registration for T-ball is not, um, you know, designing jerseys reaching out to um, some of my coaches and being like, hey, um, you know, stop by my house. We just got an order of baseballs. Amy Schrader just hooked us up with baseball. So, you know, meet me at my house. We're going to take care of this. Um, mm -hmm. You know, yeah, you, you don't have to keep giving examples, but I, I, I guess um, maybe we're worried about something that you're not worried at all about. 
Um, but like, how how is eight? Well, uh, since she's here, how is Amy Schrader going to feel about that if somebody else is getting paid for the same kind of stuff that she's doing as a volunteer? Yeah, I mean, I just I feel like it's just a it's just a totally different amount of time that you're putting into it. Like, I can rely on my recognition right now um, to help make sure that we're all making the right choices. Um, so let's hold um, not only the rec chairman accountable, but hold our town accountable to make sure that these kids are getting that support. Um, so I certainly understand what you're, what you're saying um, in regards to someone else on the rec commission, maybe, you know, again, distinguishing the different roles. But I think that that's something that's, that's kind of already happened. There is someone who is clearly taking on a role that is putting in a significant amount of time um, while a general recognition seat is not taking on those administrative um, responsibilities. And I think that is the key for the rec director position is taken on those administrative responsibilities. Um, Cause that's something that it's, it's not something I think that you can rely on volunteer labor to do anymore. You know, I think I can reach out to Wayne Hakotsky, who's one of my rec commission members and be like, hey, we're doing evaluations on uh, Sunday, May 8th for the summer baseball teams. Could you be there to help me out? Bam, he's there, you know, or Jake Schrader, I got to reach out to you about what we're doing with T-ball this weekend. What do you have for me? So that kind of stuff, while well, again, there's that paid position who's taking care of all, all the other administrative work, um, you know, that, that we've been talking about. So I do, I think it's a very, I think the rule is very clear to everyone who's involved. And I think that's kind of where the rec commission voting to, uh, to create this position, I think that kind of solidifies that, um, you know, at least on the rec commission, we're kind of all on the same page as to what we think is best we think is for that. Amy had a question. Oh, certainly. So I just, um, I support this position and I do see the need for it. Um, but my thought here is that with obviously Jake being a rec commission member, um, you know, when it comes to bigger things like field maintenance, I mean, when the infield mix was delivered to Hurley, I mean, we brought our skid steer down there and Jake and Wayne um, spread the infield mix. Like, I don't ever want to charge the town for anything like that because I feel like it's part of, you know, a small town and it's what you do to help out. But parts of me feel like, well, wow, that's a really big volunteer thing to do. And if you're doing that because you're part of the rec commission, part of me is like the average rec commission member doesn't have a skid steer to be capable of doing that. Like, so I, I, I get a little bit like, you know, when, you know, lining the soccer fields, totally understandable and easy enough to do. Um, but, you know, Jake having to go get a trailer to move the soccer goals from the Waitley Elementary School to Hurley, you know, that's all time. And, and now it's gas money. And now it's, it's skid steer money. It, you know, it's, it, it comes back to us in a different way, but so part of me is kind of like, these are really big responsibilities for a volunteer committee. And even like I asked Keith the other day about sprucing up Hurley Heath Field for Family Fun Day. I mean, the fence is falling over, the, the parking lot's in rough shape, the, the shed could probably be spruced up. Um, and I get a little worried when the response is, well, that's the rec commission. I mean, out of your members, who's gonna go down and fix the fence? You know, that's that's a involved job unless we hire it out, which is a possibility, but I, I, so I agree with definitely an administrative position and what you're trying to do is a wonderful thing and reviving this and making it great. I just don't want to forget that like field maintenance and that type of stuff is also very time consuming and can cost members money. Yes, absolutely. And I, you know, that's, that's something where kind of you know, having those small town kind of relationships, that's that's what makes Whaley great, right? South Deerfield, Conway, Sunderland, 
I feel, you know, we're in these types of community communities where we have citizens who are invested in what we're trying to do. Um, and, you know, I guess what I would say is, um, you know, is that's not, that's not a necessarily, and I do believe it's consistent because I do think Wayne and Jake have done that for a long time. And I do think that they're going to continue to help us out in that way. But just that, that's, that's not something that's necessarily guaranteed. And the rec commission, our budget, all of that, we have to be able to be prepared in order to outsource that so that someone's doing that work too at the same time, you know? And then, yeah, I just, um, you know, that that is a luxury that you just, you can't take for granted by any means. But at the same time, that's something that nobody, nobody owes us that, right? You know, that's, that's people going, stepping up and going above and beyond. Um, so I just, I do, I just kind of see those as two different things where it's like, okay, Jake and Wayne aren't around anymore. Their kids are, you know, up and you're doing, doing different things. So it's like, okay, it's that rec commission, it's that rec director's responsibility. You make sure that gets done. Like, we're getting piles of dirt. Okay, Wayne's not available. Jake's not available. Keith's busy. Whatever. It's like okay, we got to use our resources resources to get somebody else in here. Um, you know, uh, I think about. I just got in touch with Snows um, about sprucing up sprucing up the grass. We got to get we got to get spraying, and that's something you know maybe a farmer would do for us sometime. But, we don't have that right now. So we have to adjust and reach out to a different kind of organization to help us out. So, um, you know, I guess that's sort of the best way I would explain it. Like that's someone going above and beyond, but that's not necessarily something that we're entitled to. Thing. While youth sports and having those programs, that is something our town citizens are entitled to and must have. You know, and that that type of maintenance work at the field certainly has to happen. But that's not like, hey, Jake, you make sure you're there kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like if Jake decides and I got I got bigger fish to fry kind of thing. It's like, okay, rec director, you need to utilize relationships, utilize resources to make sure that this is still happening, kind of thing. I Chris, one of the things that you know, going back to our one of our first topics we discussed about the fact of this position not being on the rec committee. I think if we sort of stick to that, that helps create separate, sep you know, separation from the volunteerism versus the paid side of it. Um, so, you know, I'll get back to our, the committee. Does that, our committee have any other questions that we want to ask them or we feel we have enough information to move forward, Brian? I, uh, Chris, I just have a question about, um, you mentioned before about, about either weight, you said weight was taking over some, some regional leagues, maybe it's something like that. What part of, so when I always think about that, I think about sort of is weight lease subsidizing or will weight lease subsidize other towns participation in leagues? And if so, um, how do we avoid that? Is there an administrative fee that's given to, if we were to pay this position, right? Now, Waitley's subsidizing with its own tax dollars, essentially the leagues. Is there is there an administrative fee that that would come back to the town? Is that is that how that works? Sort of how is that set up, and how much, you know, sort of Waitley Town League versus Regional League? Do you think the work would be? Um, so I think it would be. Almost, I mean, it would remain to be totally town, you know, doing local organization of youth sports by all means. Um, but I mean, Waitley, wait, Waitley, wait, like Waitley teams that 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 we're paying for, not necessarily coordinating a league that Waitley's in. You know, that's what I'm trying to make the distinction of. Um, yeah. So, you know, I mean, South Deerfield they have that paid position. Sutherland has the paid position, and they're not you know, swiping up Waitley kids by any means. So we'd continue. It would be Waitley, you know, Waitley soccer, Waitley baseball, Waitley basketball. That, you know, that's going to continue to happen. And the, the regional thing, that, that honestly is, that's just, that's just for summer. Um, 
that's something where we're taking the best kids from Waitley, from Conway, from Deerfield um, to, to kind of give these it's there's always been summer baseball that's been going on forever and it's just kind of gotten to sort of a kind of a shallow point I will say so it's like okay I'm pretty familiar with baseball so I I took on this role and then Waitley is going to get that registration money um which is going to help our other programs by all means um so as far as taking away from other towns Nope, it's gonna it's gonna continue to be Waitley youth sports by all means. Um, just that that one that one thing in the summer. That's the one that's the one reason, and that's just to give you know to really the reason we're taking it on is because we have the best little league field. That's you know that that's why we're between that and me obsessed with baseball. So yeah. So to, to, just to be clear, administering. Um, this summer league that's more regional than just Waitley will actually put money in the um, rec commission's budget, which they can then use for things like, well, the day that they don't have a volunteer with the right kind of, I don't know, backhoe, I'm sorry, I've got the wrong name, <laughs> to help with one thing or another. So you're actually earning some money, which maybe doesn't come back to the town in the sense that Brian meant, but it comes back to the town in the sense that the rec commission yep. is earning money by providing that service. Is Absolutely. That, does, yep. that, does that seem clear? Uh, is that what you understood, Brian? Yeah, I, I just wanted to, we talked about this with other departments too, our, our, you know, our, our town employees doing work for others that we should be compensated for. That was my concern, right? If, if we go and do something for Deerfield or Sunderland, right, we should, you know, we should be compensated for our time so that yeah, way we taxpayers aren't, aren't paying for, I don't know, Sunderland rec, you know what I mean? That's, that's just what I wanted to make sure. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Sunderland and, and South Deerfield, they are not giving us responsibilities because those, you know, those people, they have their working positions and they have their responsibilities and their duties that they are, <laughs> following through with and you know totally totally like that so again that's going to continue going Waitley's going to continue operating at our level um I think if we have a rec director a paid position that we can guarantee that we're holding someone accountable down here you know it's not like oh we got a new like oh so-and-so's kids are gone like all right we got to start over and get get this get this person ready to go kind of thing. So that's, that's where the, where the paid position um, really comes up big. It's just that, that consistency um, and no excuse ever for not being organized. And I think that holding someone accountable for that is just going to help youth sports continue to get better and better. I mean, um, you know, even, you know, even recently, like we're, basketball stuff like our registrations we made so much money off that because it was the easiest thing in the world to to register so our registrations have skyrocketed and, i mean youth baseball this year holy cow it's it's insane for for t-ball in grades one and two um so so yeah it's just you know you keep keep putting out a good product and people are going to keep keep wanting to be a part of it kind of thing and um that's right. I just I think that that consistent resource is going to go a long way for our town. Great. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. One last question. This might not be what this committee does, but um, uh, the the hourly rate for this. How does that officially get set? And maybe Brian or Keith know that. The I mean, personnel it, committee could make a recommendation, but it, the select board is the the final decision oh. maker on both the job description and and the rates. And then obviously the finance committee would have to approve a budget that includes those figures, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, okay. Okay, does anybody else on the committee have any other questions? Is everybody satisfied with the, the wording? Do we wanna make any changes? We want to. Does anybody care to make a motion? Um, well, and make I, a motion. We approve the position. 
uh, should it be as a in the position that they cannot be a serving member of the rec committee at the yeah. time? I, I'd be comfortable with that in their job description, but I'm not an HR person, so I don't really know if that's uh, not done. I myself feel that it would be better that the position is not a member of the rec commission. Yeah, and but yeah, does that go into a position description or is that something that is enforced a different way? Uh, that's, I don't know the procedure if, you know, if that's the kind of thing you put in a, in a job description. I would agree that it should be in here. Okay, then maybe under, uh, where's the one, I, that one, so I can't- Go back to the top. One. Um, responsibilities, uh, desired minimum qualifications. Um, is it under qualifications perhaps, or uh, could it just be in the summary? Supervision receives essential duties and responsibilities. Yeah, I mean, a simple statement that the, uh, Recreation coordinator shall not be a serving member of the rec commission, or is, I don't know if it's rec department or rec commission. We seem to use those words interchangeably. I, I think officially we refer to it as the rec commission, at least. Yeah. That's what I'm under the impression of. Maybe under supervision received, we could just add a sentence to the end of that. And that says, the recreation coordinator uh, cannot be a serving member of the Recreation Commission. Yep. I mean, that seems a reasonable place to put it, but I'm, I'm, I'm not that stuck on where exactly to put it. We just have to put it someplace before we vote on it. It makes sense what you're saying because that's the rationale for limiting it is because it's supervised. So kind of tying them together in, in the future, yeah. hopefully people can understand that was right. why. Or is it a qualification? Like below, they, they talk about education and knowledge, skills, and abilities. It might also make sense to say, just add a, a, a one sentence paragraph to that section saying, the re recreation coordinator will not be a serving member of the recreation commission. I mean, they could be in the past, they could be in the future, but they wouldn't be at the mm -hmm. time that they have this job. I'm fine with either. All right, and how are we going to leave the hours? Are we satisfied then with the five hours? That's fine. Mm -hmm. um, I'm okay, okay with that. I agree with that. Yeah. All right. So, Tom, you had started by making the motion. Do you want to then just make that motion again with the changes we made? Keith, can, can I just clarify motion? something? Okay, yep. go ahead. Is it is it five hours per week paid, or is it up to five hours per week? Is it, you know what I mean? Is it up to five hours a week? So it's, or is it more of a stipend position? A it doesn't I hurt mean, to say up to five hours, right? Well, it, it's going to matter from a payroll perspective, right? Because if it's going to be, if we're going to pay somebody for five hours a week, are we paying them for five hours a week, regardless if they work three, I guess, is my question. Mm. Or That's is a it, good point. Then it's considered a salaried position. I, if I may, pay. anyway. Go ahead. Go ahead, I was Chris. Just gonna, I was just going to say, like, as the up to five hours, like, if you're, I guess, as a member of the Rec Commission, if our rec director was not putting in five hours, then I know personally I would not be satisfied with with what they're trying to do. Because um, you, 
right. if you if you have these responsibilities and you're doing them efficiently and effectively, you are not putting in any less than five hours by any, by any means. You know, so I, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even want that to be an option. Five hours minimum. Well. Minimum. Yeah, when we write a position, though, we writing it for not just the person who we think will be the first one to fill that position. Um, yeah, so if, you know, if something is if something in the future comes up where there's, you know, I, I, you know, having the flexibility in the language is worth considering from the start. Yeah, understood, understood. Okay, so then that takes us back to the to our attempt to get the motion on the floor. <laughs> Make um, a motion. We approve this position. Second. Okay. Uh, I I want to make it clear that in the position, and I'll just say in the uh, uh, under desired minimum qualifications, it should clearly state that the recreation coordinator uh, cannot be a serving member of the rec. I believe it does. Go yes, to the bottom does. of the page. Brian has added that in, so. Yeah. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm looking at the one they sent by email. So th that, okay, yes, if that's on the one Brian has done, then we're good. Yeah, I like it. Okay, so I have a motion made by Tom. Did I get a second? Second. Yep. Okay, I have a motion made and second. I think we're have beat this enough. I think we don't need any more discussion. I'll call for a vote. Tom? Aye. Joyce? Aye. Susan? Aye. Betty? Aye. And myself? Aye. Okay. We have concluded that. Thank you, Chris, for attending so we can get this done thank you i don't know how long you guys had to wait for me but i i do i appreciate it we were just the game and amers took longer we were scoring scoring too many runs <laughs> it took up some time a good but, thing so, yeah, yeah scoring yeah. too many runs there hmm. <laughs> yeah. all right well thank okay. you okay so then we we as a committee will now wait to hear from are we set for 7.30 on the 14th then? Yeah. Sure. If we, um, uh, do we need to vote on uh, what we think the pay rate should be? Or, cause that's the other thing okay. that would go to the select board. Does that need a separate vote? I guess we would at this point. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I would move that we, that since this is a largely administrative job, we pay at the same rate as administrative assistant that's already in our um, in our list of jobs, which I believe is within a few pennies of $21 an hour. I second that. Okay, I have a motion made and second. Is there any other discussion? If not, I will call, put the vote to a call. Susan? I yes. guess one thing I, I would say, just kind of like doing some research on, on um, you know, some other rec director positions. Um, it does seem like in the state, the range seems to be more from like 25 to, to 35 in the average, like the average being above, above 25. So I do, I do think if we're going to have, you know, administrative qualifications, um, you know, especially if someone has educational background, something like that, maybe that is something just to be consistent with some other paid positions in Massachusetts. Well, in Massachusetts, but we also have to be uh, consistent within our own town. And, and we're not willing to pay an hourly rate higher than our highway superintendent. Understood, understood. Not to start anyway. It's, it's, a, it's a starting point, Chris, and we can, yeah. we can always address it at a later time. Works for me. Okay, so I had motion made and seconded. I'll proceed with a roll call vote. Susan? Yes. Joyce? Aye. Betty? Yes. Tom? Aye. And myself? Aye. 
All right. Seeing that is completed, then I will come back to the same question. We're all set for the 7.30 on the 14th? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn. A second. Motion made and seconded. <laughs> I'll do the roll call vote as we need to. Susan. Aye. Joyce. Aye. Tom. Aye. Betty. Aye. And myself. Aye. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night.